Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-3755. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures Personnel reading this document are required to examine the attached photograph before reading beyond this paragraph. Those unable to immediately identify the number of objects pictured, as indicated by the caption, should close this file and report to the senior researcher assigned to SCP-3755. Otherwise, no special action is required before reading the rest of this document. Warning. The following material contains Class 1 cognito hazards. Read the above portion of the special containment procedures before proceeding. Foundation staff unable to display SCP-3755-1 or who show symptoms of SCP-3755-2 should be reported to the senior researcher assigned to SCP-3755 for documentation and treatment. Persons showing symptoms of SCP-3755-2 are to not be made aware of their condition. Clearance Level 2 3755 is required to access this document. Clearance Level 2 3755 is not to be given to personnel symptomatic of SCP-3755-2. Information regarding SCP-3755, particularly known SCP-3755-2 manifestations, is considered cognitohazardous to anyone who does not possess clearance level 2, 3755. The number 755 is on the list of keywords monitored by Foundation web crawlers. Situations where SCP-3755 is suspected to have been discovered by members of the public are to be investigated and contained using procedures standard for outbreaks of Class 1 cognitohazards with the additional provision that all members of the responding mobile task force must have clearance level 23755. Description SCP-3755-1 is a phenomenon where individuals presented with 755 similar items are able to assess the exact number of items in the set. This enumeration is performed immediately, within less than 100 milliseconds, and has only been observed with sets of 755 objects. Subjects who display SCP-3755-1 show high confidence in their assessment and show no surprise when proven correct, even when reminded of the unlikelihood of perfect estimation with such a large number of objects. MRI scans comparing brains performing SCP-3755-1 and non-anomalous subitizing display similar activation patterns. SCP-3755-1 can be displayed by 83% of humans capable of subitizing. SCP-3755-2 is a psychological condition found in those unable to display SCP-3755-1. Subjects affected by SCP-3755-2 exhibit hesitance in situations that require the assignment of numerical values to physical objects or abstract concepts. The condition initially manifests uniquely in each individual who suffers from SCP-3755-2, influencing a single aspect of their daily lives. See Document 3755-A for examples of known cases. When a person discovers they are unable to display SCP-3755-1, their SCP-3755-2 symptoms worsen. The development of these symptoms progresses as follows. Phase 1 – Initial State Subjects regularly suffer minor doubt when recalling numbers, counting objects, or estimating amounts in relation to their SCP-3755-2 manifestation. These doubts usually manifest as light urges to recount or recheck their source on a matter. Phase 2 – 72 hours after exposure to SCP-3755-1 SCP-3755-2 symptoms increase in intensity. Subjects feel anxiety when introduced to situations connected to their manifestation. Phase 3 – One week after exposure. Subjects cannot perform tasks which involve their SCP-3755-2 manifestation without seeking confirmation on their assessments. This confirmation must come from another individual. Phase 4 – Three weeks after exposure. Subjects no longer find external confirmation sufficient to calm their doubts. Phase 5 – One month after exposure Subjects reject all numerical assessments that relate to the area of their SCP-3755-2 manifestation. Even when such assessments originate from outside sources, 
such as trusted colleagues or friends. Progression through these phases can be more rapid in cases where subjects have existing anxiety or compulsive disorders. SCP-37552 symptoms can be lowered to Phase 1 levels through the application of Class B amnestics targeting the memories of SCP-37551 exposure. Amnestic treatment has only proven effective before the onset of Phase 4. Additionally, SCP-37552 manifestations appear to be transmittable. When the details of another person's symptoms are brought to the attention of someone susceptible to SCP-37552, they begin to display similar symptoms. The reason for this transmission is unknown. Ongoing research focuses on determining if the transmission vector is a form of hypochondria or an anomalous mimetic effect. Amnestics are ineffective in purging transmitted symptoms of SCP-37552. Document SCP-3755-A, SCP-3755-2 Manifestation Log This record contains a partial list of members of Foundation staff known to have been affected by SCP-3755-2. Individual, Junior Researcher Henry Zoltolsky Area of SCP-3755-2 Manifestation Amounts of Coins Common Phase 1 Manifestation found difficulty making exact change. Further stage of progression, phase 5. Manifestation at later stage. Refuses to shop at locations which do not accept credit cards. Individual, Dr. Jules Pendleton. Area of SCP-3755-2 manifestation, speed limits. Common phase 1 manifestation. Is often unsure of the speed limit even in areas she knows well. Further stage of progression, Phase 2. Manifestation at later stage, requested to carpool with Dr. to and from Site-19, since recovered. Individual, Agent Donald Rice. Area of SCP-3755-2 manifestation, times of day. Common Phase 1 manifestation. Recheck schedule in 15-minute intervals to confirm when regular meetings are to take place. Further stage of progression, Phase 1. Manifestation at later stage, non-applicable. Individual, Junior Researcher Boris Lockhead. Area of SCP-3755-2 Manifestation, Measurements. Common Phase 1 Manifestation, always looks up conversion factors for Imperial units. Furthest stage of progression, Phase 1. Manifestation at later stage, non-applicable. Individual, D-33087. Area of SCP-3755-2 Manifestation, Ages Common Phase 1 Manifestation Habitually calculates the ages of their children. Further stage of progression, Phase 5 Manifestation at later stage Birth records were only found for two of the four children D-33087 claimed to have. D-33087 did not accept the veracity of the documents and stated their oldest child was 15 years old and their youngest children, supposedly twins, were turning 40 next October. D-33087 was 34 years old upon reaching Phase 5. Individual, Dr. Jason Brave. Area of SCP-3755-2 Manifestation. Medical Dosages. Common Phase 1 Manifestation. Has almost handed out improper doses of amnestics on five occasions in the past month. Further stage of progression, Phase 2. Manifestation at later stage, deferred all requests for prescription fulfillment to Dr. since recovered. Individual, Analyst Ruth Ninsular. Area of SCP-3755-2 Manifestation, Food Portions. Common Phase 1 Manifestation, Overorders Food for Office Parties. Further stage of progression, Phase 1. Manifestation at later stage, non-applicable. Individual, Dr. Victor Salvor. Area of SCP-3755-2 Manifestation, Measurements. Common Phase 1 Manifestation, often inserts the wrong SI prefixes in drafts for SCP documents. For this stage of progression, Phase 3. Manifestation at later stage, redacted, since recovered. Okay. I think that about does it for today. Thank you for listening. 
if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Big Sip, Timothy, Zargaran, The Morrigan, James Saba, Vibing Shockwave, Killer Hunter Joe, Fire of Prime, Indy vs. The World, Spencer Arduin, Rubbish Bin 69, Broken Sketch, Dr. Wolf 13, Cupster, Spencer J. Tilp, Zazapan, Lemke, Signar, Alatreon, Your Local Foundation Agent, Derivative, Lost Boy, Lyndon B. Johnson, and Oh Crap Guy. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash the Volgan. Thank you.